Hello and welcome to a quick video about Git. We're going to be talking about the difference between dash dash sign and dash dash gpg sign. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. So these are really easy to get confused. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I usually look up the flags each time that I run it, but I wanted to show you what the two do and why they're less than useful. I don't know. <laughs> they're they're kind of useful, but also kind of not. Uh, let's just clone a repo and we will be making some commits in here just to show what's going on here. Um, it's going to make a branch and we're going to do git commit dash dash allow empty. We're making an empty commit. Uh, hello world. And we're going to start by just showing you what dash dash sign does. I believe it's actually short for sign off. Yeah. Uh, but the, <laughs> the, um, the argument supports prefix matching, so you could also just do dash dash sign. Uh, anyway, when we run this command, it makes a commit just as normal. And if we show this commit, we'll, I'm actually going to use cat file, which is kind of the, the low level way to show exactly what Git stores here. Uh, you'll see that it stores the message and it stores this other message here. Uh, we show it normally that also shows up inside of our message. And this is all that dash dash sign off does. It adds this special little signed off by your name and your email address, which is a little silly because it also is in the author and the committer as well. Uh, but a lot of projects have used this as, uh, I believe it's called DCO. I don't remember what it stands for, but it, it's, a, it's a way to say like, you know, I certify that this commit is mine. I am intentionally doing this, even though of course, Git is already including this information here. Uh, it's used as sort of a lightweight con contributor license agreement, a CLA. Uh, such that they don't have to sign a big, long, fancy document. So it's, it's kind of a light way to say, I did this, I, I, you know, it's got my seal of approval. Now, of course, anyone could write whatever text they want in here. So, you know, you could, you could also say it's signed off by, you know, Joe Biden. <laughs> I don't know, Joe at whitehouse.gov. You can, you can literally put whatever you want in there and there's nothing that prevents somebody from, you know, putting, putting arbitrary values in here. So it's, it's not a great certification that this actually happens, but that's, that's what the command line does. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to show you is the GPG sign uh, option, which if we make another commit, uh, instead of doing dash dash sign off, we're going to do dash dash gpg sign, which is, uh, well, I already have my gpg key authorized, so normally it would pop up a thing asking me to type in my password, but of course I tried this before the video to make sure that it actually still worked and that I didn't have to auth my password manager, so it already gpg signed my commit. Now if we show the commit, it just looks like a normal, normal old commit, uh, but if we look at the actual commit itself, git cat file dash p this, you'll see that there is a PGP, a, a GPG signature. I don't, don't ask me the difference between PGP and GPG. To me, they're the same thing. Uh, I might be right, I might be wrong, don't know. Uh, but basically what GPG sign does is it signs the contents of your commit with, a, with your GPG key. Basically giving a stronger verification that you are the person that did this commit and that you know actually produce these contents. Now, of course, you would need someone else to verify that that GPG actually, uh, the, the key actually belongs to you and that you know, the, the chain of trust is in play. And there's, there's all sorts of fiddly things that make GPG not really a great tool for this. But this is you know, an example of, of what that does. Uh, so basically the difference between the two is sign off adds a little blurb to the bottom of your code message. GPG sign will make a GPG signature of your actual commit. Uh, and that's kind of the difference. They're otherwise unrelated. You can combine both of them, I think, I assume. Sign off. Uh, I assume this, whoa, that's weird. I assume this uh, does the GPG. Wait, we didn't get the sign off at the bottom. Huh. Weird. Maybe this overrides sign off with the assumption that, oh, of course I signed off on it when I if I signed it with my GPG key. Very strange. Anyway, that's um, you know, that's those two options. Hopefully, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.